We are going to now discuss the hazards of electricity. I'd like to know if any of my students already know any of these hazards, so please type into your chat box if you already know any of the hazards that are associated with electricity. Oh, look, coming in already, we have from Tim, Arc Flash, and that's great. That is one of the hazards that are associated uh, with electricity, and that is mentioned in Annex K of NFPA 70E. Uh, and we have Marty, who just typed in uh, shock, and that's excellent, because that's the one we're going to talk about in detail today. And also in Annex K, they mentioned arc blast. But let's talk about shock and how we can protect your workers from receiving an electrical shock. The first step would be to get some proper personal protective equipment, which is going to be gloves. So here you can see I have three sets of gloves. I have a cotton glove, then I have this rubber glove, and I have what we're going to call a leather protector. The cotton glove serves a couple things for me. When I put it on, it takes care of any perspiration that I might have on my hand. It also takes care of uh, contaminants like oil and grease and things like that. And when I go to put on my rubber glove, it really helps with the feel of that rubber against my skin so I don't have that rubber right up against my bare skin. And I see I have a question here from uh, Marty again. Well, what about dexterity? And that's a great question. And that begins with the proper size of rubber glove. If I me take a tape measure and measure right around my knuckle area, when that tape measure comes back and touches itself, whatever number I see, that's the size glove I, I should uh, purchase. So here, with the red label that we have, you can see that this is a number uh, size 10 glove. The number 10 is on this. And a, a size 10 glove fits me very well. You can see my knuckles right here. That's going to really help with dexterity. That was a great question you had, Marty. Next, I'm going to put on this uh, leather protector. This particular leather protector has an ATPV value, which is arc thermal performance value. And this one is measured in 22 calories per centimeter squared. Oh, I have another question, and this question is from Robert, and he wants to know what the 22 calories really means. Well, that's an indication of how much heat that this leather protector will protect me against before I receive a third degree burn. And we're going to talk in detail about uh, calories per centimeter squared and incident energy when we discuss our arc flash analysis a little bit later in this class. But now I have to put on this leather protector. So leather protector goes on. This really protects the rubber from getting a pinhole in it because if the, if the uh, rubber glove did have a pinhole in it, the electricity can find the smallest of holes and we would still receive a shock. And let's get back to the dexterity a little bit. Now I have to go out and perform my job. Well, even picking up something as small as this pen can be accomplished very easily with practice. Something a little bit larger, like a circuit breaker, no issues whatsoever, but it all takes practice. And remember, before each day's use, we have to give this rubber an air test. So we would purchase an inflator, pump some air into here, hold it against my cheek, make sure there's no air coming out, and uh, that would be very good to make sure that my workers did not receive a shock. But every six months, we're going to have this glove be dielectrically tested. So what does that mean? Well, that means that we're going to go, and remember, I had a red label. So that means that I have a class zero glove. And when this gets to be sent out to be dielectrically tested, it's going to be t uh, tested at 5,000 volts AC and 20,000 volts DC, way above my use of that glove. I can use this glove all the way up to 1,000 volts AC and 1500 volts DC. Do we have any questions at this moment in time? Just type them into your chat box if we do.